Do you believe in an afterlife? You know what? I find it I find it very difficult to believe that all of this is happening and when you pass there would be nothing. I, I, I find that hard to believe. And I also find it hard to believe that there is nothing when you speak to so many people who've had near-death experiences and they all experience similar things. And I think in this world of technological wonder, there are still many things that we as human beings can't explain. So, yes, I do believe in an afterlife and I do think there has to be more out there. And I think if there's not more out there, what would be the point of everything? I don't know. I think... I, I don't know whether that's just me comforting myself, but especially now that I'm a father, the idea of one day, you know, lying on my deathbed and never being reconnected, you know, with my daughter at some point or never seeing what she goes on to achieve would be it's sort of heartbreaking. And I think that there is something else out there. And one thing that I've been reading recently is how increasingly there's a large body of scientists who, you know, are saying that, the world we live in is some kind of simulation or some kind of petri dish you know program where we're all held in here as some kind of experiment ourselves mm. and in a way that would be an afterlife a sort of scientific afterlife if you like because we'd all be in some kind of simulation <clears throat> well, i don't know the way this game ended in the first place was that um the telus principle won and it was a, a different take on afterlife because the afterlife was essentially the experiences, the sum total experiences of you that you accumulated that get get passed on onto other iterations of uh, consciousness or you know the the program, so to speak. So the afterlife essentially was the 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 sum total experience being re-manifested in a new form or evolved state which i thought was interesting um not something i completely agree with but i just thought it was a different and a take on afterlife and also there's there's a number of different concepts of afterlife there's there's the the thought that an afterlife is the way you live on in memories for example so you're not truly conscious but other other than being conscious and living memory i mean that's the only certain afterlife that we can be sure of in is how we're remembered you know like icons um influence and continue to have an impact on this earth long long after they're gone so that's some form of an afterlife and another form of afterlife is <clears throat> which and i'm not sure you're, you're religious or how religious the audience is but i i read my bible quite a lot and um there was a a scripture which I read, which and I've noticed a correlation. It talks about the life being in the blood. And when you look up, which I, I do really dissect a lot of the original language, such as the Greek and the uh, ancient Hebrew, which is the Paleo Hebrew, and there, there's an association with life and soul. So essentially, the understanding is that the soul of a being, of a creature, is passed on through the blood, which makes perfect sense in 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 that your dna your memories your ancestors are all passed on the all and, and you as an organism organic form capture the soul the soul lives on through the blood and then them shared experiences uh, get passed on throughout so that is a more biological afterlife that, that kind of shares a thread from the the ending of the first game, Talos Principle, which I thought was interesting. So, you know, there's different types of afterlife that we can have, but with regards to a spiritual afterlife of being conscious, obviously, um, you know, we're from a Christian perspective, um, it's, uh, you know, this, this heaven, hell, and it's almost like an echo of how you've lived here on earth um, in, in eternity. So, I mean, we'll have to wait and see, but the only thing we can be sure of for now is, um, you know, the life we live here on Earth and how we how we treat people, how we treat our brothers and sisters, and you know the things we strive for. It's something I think it's a really to think interesting about. thing you say about like, sort of, you, you know, that if you if you if you sort of have, I suppose if you have children, even if you do die, 
you have a genetic afterlife because your genes live on yeah. and in some ways everything that your children go on to do is an expression of you and it, it's quite funny like when you when you do go on to to have children i will say my daughter does certain things that are just mm. sort of versions of me or her mother and when you see her doing so um you know her mother is very very creative and, and artistic and Sophia is really artistic and creative. She loves the craft box. She loves drawing. She loves all things like that. And that's very much from my mother. But she's also got a very, very fiery temper. And is that from you? She's the kind of, <laughs> that, yes. She's, she is very much like me when it comes to her, you know, to her fiery temper and her little mood swings when you know she's not winning or things aren't going right and you know her mother always says that's you coming out that is that is you <laughs> you know and i i, I do think it, it's quite interesting when you when you talk about sort of an afterlife and you talk about this sort of you know idea of a, of a genetic afterlife because that is just something that is is so um you know it is so true and i think it, it's quite interesting that the powers that be in their sort of drive to prevent white people from breeding and prevent white people from um, having children or dissuading them from having children there is obviously the issue of sort of us as a people you know continuing not not to uh you know not to exist but there's also the issue that they are robbing us almost of, um, you know, of uh, of our afterlife, of, of mm. living on. You know, they're taking away that sort of eternal life of your genetics being on the planet 300, 400, you know, a thousand years after you're long gone. Yeah. Yes, it's a, it's a damn shame. But I think our, our people will continue to live on. Um for many centuries more i think we are being refined i think we're undergoing a lot of um a lot of hardships um but it's a filtering process and we're being refined through fire and if you think about it we will dwindle in number we will get a kind of we, we could go down to like two three percent of the world population if not one percent of the world population but by doing that it's only going to um enable the uh, the best of our people the the better thinkers and if you think about that the soul of the ancestors that are the best of that have ever lived will get to uh, see you know a future um so you know uh, there is hope in in darkness i think we just have to um make sure that we uh uh you know find a cohesive common ground and put all of our differences aside 